To find out how schools are successfully tackling in-school variation, we've come to Gordano School. There are three key elements to its ISV project. Departments working together, a new role for pastoral leaders, and students observing lessons. Gordano School is a comprehensive on the outskirts of Bristol with 1,800 students. When he first looked at ISV, head teacher Graham Silverthorne recognised there was a problem. Some subjects were achieving 85% A star to C's, others were as low as 45%. I think it's important not to be too sensitive. Um, you know, we live in the real world, and in the real world, everyone can see the numbers. Um, so, although we need to handle it with sensitivity, we mustn't um, we mustn't excuse underperformance. That might sound a hard thing to say, um, but if um, if children are doing better in some faculty areas than others, we need to ask that question. Now, I think um, the teachers here, and I think all all good teachers, will want to know the answers to those questions. And sometimes, it's not about working harder. Um, you know, so a lot of teachers will be working flat out, but the results don't follow. It's about asking the smart questions and thinking about the small things to change that create the tipping point for change. English was one of the subjects where results were causing concern. We just felt we weren't getting as much as we needed to out of the English faculty, or perhaps in, in the case of English, it was an aspirational issue that people were satisfied with too little, uh, and we needed to raise the bar in terms of what, uh, what the expectations were that children could achieve. One of the innovations at the school has been to partner heads of faculty. So Adam Snow, head of humanities, was partnered with the then head of English. He now does a weekly learning walk through the English department and reports back. OK, so you're pushing to level five now, yeah. and you've got that target at the end of the year, haven't you? Yeah. OK, so with this task, do you know what you need to be doing to get your level five? Level five? I don't know, like, describe well, better than... We might want to do some follow-up work on how much those um, targets have been embedded mm. into sort of students' own understanding. Because often if I'm going around in a, in a class, I'll ask students, do they know their target? Mm. Do they know where they're going to? Um, they usually know that. There's always one or two that when you say, well, what, what is it you need to do to get there? Um, some of our students can answer that brilliantly mm. and give me very detailed uh, examples. But they're often the, the slightly higher ability students. Uh, and I think one thing we might want to check is whether those, uh, whether all the students, if we say to them, what are you actually trying to achieve mm. here to get that target, whether they can actually tell us without having to sort of look at a sticker in the front of their book. English is now doing well. One of the weaknesses in the past was the use of data. I think the data was a, was a big thing. We weren't tracking, we weren't keeping uh, monitoring systems as successfully. Um, we weren't really able to, to hone in on what the, in terms of a microanalysis, what the problems were. It was a general feeling of, oh, well, we're not getting enough level sixes, but we weren't necessarily able to zoom in um, in the minutiae of why that was and to have somebody who's able to have a, a big picture perspective, someone who is experienced, someone who is um, data rich and knows how to use that, that was something that we were able to then take on board ourselves to actually zoom in on what the particular problems were. When Adam was first partnered with English, he recognised that he needed to tread carefully. Although he was head of a high-performing department, his approach had to be collaborative. OK, um, would someone like to explain to Mr Snow what mm. we're doing today? Go on, Zach, tell me. Um, we're, like, doing posters on uh, some quotes on Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet and explain them. And it was a culture shock initially because I'd been head of faculty for three or four years at the time. Um, and obviously I've got a, a way of working and my team were used to me and the way I worked and, and things were as I wanted it in my faculty. Moving to another faculty, you have to be very careful of how you're going to um, approach the role. Now, my philosophy has always been I wanted it to be seen not as a top-down model where I was dictating and telling the head of English what should be going on. Um, my view on it was it was supposed to be a, a sort of empowerment model where I'd be mentoring the head of English and actually hoping that if I posed the questions that the English 
uh, team and the head of English would actually come up with the answers themselves. Um, so they had the ownership of, of what they wanted to improve. So that's, that's the philosophy behind this, and I think that's worked well. But when you went in, mm. they didn't know that was going to be the philosophy. No, they didn't. Um, and I have to say that they were very, very positive about it. Um, obviously, I was in a position where I didn't know whether the feelings would be positive or whether there'd be feelings of perhaps fear or suspicion. I certainly knew when I was looking at the situation what I felt would be the way to improve things, but I didn't think that the message I know best was going to be the way to actually Im improve the work. Chloe, Dom, Jake, no Jake either. ISV is not just about variation in achievement between subjects. It can also be between year groups. At Gordano, pastoral leaders like Keith Berridge been trained to use data in the same way. The results, for instance, for U11 uh, are now analysed by house, uh, as well as by individuals, as well as the school total. We now break those down into to houses. Uh, so for the first time this year, as part of our professional development, um, each house learning manager has been given a target for U11s. 11 L2 is one of the Year 11 groups which Keith is responsible for. If you remember, 11L2 um, as a group were uh, languishing in last place in terms of A stars to C before. Okay, it was 63%. Good news is now it's gone up to 74% of pupils, right? So well done, right? So you are improving. Uh, the slightly worse news is that we are still in last place, but only by 1%. Like all the pastoral leaders at the school, Keith has given each of the Year 11 students in his house personal targets, and he now wants to check on how they're doing. You've got your purple card now, which is for Level 2, because um, originally you were on a Level 3, is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So what was the aim? What did you have to do on the card in order to get off it? Um, I had to do um, two things, to be honest, which was behaviour in lesson yeah. and the effort of the work that I did. Good, good. And you've done fantastically well, haven't you? Because yeah. you know, I think you've got ones on everything on that card, which is really good. Well, you've gone up from a sort of a level three now to a level two. So well done, fantastic. There's three subjects highlighted for improvement: um, English language, German, and history. And you've got improvement stickers in all of them. Yeah, well done. That's great. I've noticed as I've gone in a definite sort of team ethos coming together now that you know we are not going to be bottom. We are going to sort of drive our way up. So data can be can be very powerful. And I think um, what I've, I've noticed is that you know, when you show pupils the data, uh, when you show uh, how they can improve, when you, when you show um, just what um, they can aspire to. Um, either in graphical form or in numbers, percentage form, uh, they do respond, they understand it a lot better. We can come up with our criteria about what makes a good jingle. In examining the data, the school felt that one reason for variation was a lack of consistency in tracking coursework. They've now put in place a system so that the coursework for every student can be tracked. It seems to have had a dramatic impact. The results when I took over were about 36% A star to C. Um, this is a GCSE course, a double GCSE course. Um, and when we finished that course last year, the results were 86% A star to C, with our first ever students achieving double A stars in the award as well, which was particularly satisfying. I'm just looking at the um, ICT diploma tracker at the moment. We, we've got a unit breakdown of each of the units within the principal learning and the diploma, as you can see, where we are at the moment. And I can see that for unit one, um, it's all complete and the students are above target. For unit two, we have a similar story with three students above target and one student on target. And then looking at unit seven, um, there appears to be a slight gap in one student's piece of work. So this would, uh, this would instigate me to look at exactly why that piece of work is missing for that one particular student there. Ellie, no. Scotty, there. Corey, there. The school is also using student voice to spot variations in achievement between subjects. A group of students called Learning Detectives has been trained to observe lessons. Three minutes starts now. Movie heroes, what are they like? 
What's their personality? What are their characteristics? Gentlemen, you let me... Like many schools, a key issue at Gordano is variation in performance between boys and girls. English teacher Andy Budge has called in the learning detectives to see whether he's giving equal yeah. attention in lessons to boys and girls. Santa's wife. Powerless. Yeah. Weak. I'm a fairly dominant teacher. I mean, a lot of people who observe me say that I'm, I'm very kind of like, I'm a very visible figure in a lesson. And over the years, I've kind of thought, is, is that because I'm a bit alpha male in a classroom? If so, how do, how, do, how do different genders in my room respond to that kind of alpha maleness on my part? So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing either gender a, a disservice in my kind of style of delivery, where I do kind of dominate the space. Um, Annie. Vulnerable. Vulnerable, good word, like that. Ben, talk to me. Uh, he's spontaneous. Spell it. S P O N T A N. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Ollie. Could you say like ambitious? Yeah, you could do. Do you want to explain that? Um. Yes is the answer I'm looking for at this point. Yes, you do want to explain that. Okay. Yes, I do want to explain it. Why are moving heroes of... ambitious? Because they just sort of go for anything. Yeah. Good. Jot that down. The learning detective's verdict is positive but they've made a discovery which Andy was unaware of. Um, notes, we found that throughout the kind of whole class, even when you were having the kind of the Q&A time, the girls were kind of more constantly writing down notes, so they kind of went, as they kind of went through it all, so each time you wrote something on the board, they'd write it as well. Whereas um, most of the boys, it seemed that they didn't really write anything until you kind of said, OK, copy that down from the board. They so kind of want, didn't take the initiative as so much. So if you want boys to write stuff down, you've got to explicitly tell them that. It did So they did get way, the yeah. notes, but, like, they did need to be specifically told, please write this down. Mm, sure. That's interesting. Whereas so, girls do that automatically. They did seem to, yeah. yeah they didn't really good. seem to need that much prompting. They kind of had it down already. What we would expect in a stereotypical movie hero. Although Andy has welcomed the student observers, other teachers have been more wary. Do you agree with it's that? another aspect of tackling ISV, which requires careful management. Good. In the initial year run we've had at this, we, it's been volunteers. And we've been very, very careful to emphasise the fact that the students are not in to judge the lesson. They are, they are not in a position, bless them, to say whether it was a good lesson or a very good lesson or an outstanding lesson. Um, what, they're in, what, they, what they come in to look at is the learning. I think it makes a lot of difference for kind of the individual teacher because they don't often get someone else to kind of give them that perspective. So obviously they kind of, they have people come in and observe them who are maybe other teachers, but it's never really a student. So it's kind of really interesting for them to get a student's point of view of what going on to kind of get their opinion on, on how they deliver their, their, their lesson, how people respond to them. Some staff are never going to like that change in the traditional role between teacher and learner and the learner becoming an observer, no matter how supportively you present that. So it's a case of kind of achieving critical mass with it so that most people are on side and supportive of the idea. <laughs> Graham Silverthorne is aware of the sensitivities in dealing with ISV, but believes schools must tackle this issue head on. You're a lucky school if, if every subject is performing at the same level. Um, you can't go on getting better and better forever, but you can try and uh, establish a, a high level of consistency that doesn't have the extreme swings of performance that, um, that perhaps we've seen in the past sometimes. 